goal is not just to win, but to be worthy of winning. You serve your party best by serving our nation first. We're one team, one family, one people. We have a stake in each other's welfare. I think this is the most exciting time in the history of the world. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, that, of course, was Jack Kemp. There is a great new book out on Jack Kemp, and it is called Jack Kemp, The Bleeding Heart Conservative Who Changed America, and it is co-authored uh, by two very fine gentlemen who you're familiar with, but uh, in addition to Fred Barnes, uh, we have in studio with us Mort Kondracki, and uh, of course, you know Mort from all his years on the Fox News Channel and uh, the, the Hill, I'm sorry, Roll Call and Newsweek, and he, he ran Washington, basically, when it came to politics. Great to see you, sir. Good to see you, Steve. All right, so, so let's talk about uh, Jack Kemp, the, uh, the man and, and the book. Um, why was he so important? Uh, as we say in the first sentence of the book, actually, and it's probably the most controversial thing we say, is that he was the most influential politician of the 20th, 20th century who was not president, uh, certainly the most important Republican. Why? Because he was the original promoter, political promoter, of supply-side economics. He sold it to the Republican Party. He sold it to Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan converted it into Reaganomics. And if you remember anything about the 70s, they were horrible. Mm -hmm. High inflation, high unemployment, gas lines, uh, the Soviets moving into Afghanistan, all the rest of it. Or to New York City, drop dead. Exactly. <laughs> and and, and, and what, what, what Reaganomics did was to convert, to make, Amer make America proud of itself again, uh, help defeat the Soviet Union by, you know, stressing their economy. And, um, and uh, obviously there were almost 25 years of growth that uh, stemmed from that. And Kemp uh, was, you know, in the cockpit of it. So that's why he was so influential. And he was a heck of a quarterback, too. And he was a good quarterback, yeah. Yes. Right, so, so how has his info, I mean, I, I, people, you know, your book is, is just the latest of uh, people always talking about Jack Kemp, quoting Jack Kemp, talking about his economic policies, of, as you have so finely uh, in the book. What, how is his influence felt today? And, and if he was still here today, what might he be doing? Well, I, I think he would be unhappy. Uh, as a matter of fact, before he died, he was unhappy with the direction of, of the Republican Party. He was the true compassionate conservative, and he wanted the, the Republican Party to be the party of Lincoln. Uh, uh, Pro-civil rights, uh, big tent, uh, uh, the government not interfering with people's ability to rise, but to help them rise. So, you know, Abraham Lincoln built uh, waterways and roads and stuff like that, and used uh, the government for infrastructure. Kemp thought that lowering, lowering taxes, lessening regulation, freeing up uh, schools, for example, school choice, uh, would help the poor. But he believed he believed in government policy having an effect. Well, l let's talk about tax cuts, and we'll get to Trump's plan in the in the next segment. I want to ask you about Boehner and Trump and a lot of things in the next segment. But um, the importance of of, uh, of tax cuts for economic growth, even even in today's world, how important is that? Well, I think it's tax reform. I mean, I, you know that I think all the rates can come down as Kemp did. Uh, he uh, he was an author of the 86 tax reform, which took the top rate down to 28%. Now it's back up to almost 40%. Yep. Um, so you can lower the rates, but you have to get rid of a lot of special interest loopholes. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm convinced that crony capitalism, you, Republicans love to attack crony capitalism when it deals with uh, clean energy stuff, but there's, you know, there's carried interest, there's all kinds of subsidies for oil companies, there's farm subsidies that rich farmers don't need, there's sugar quotas, all that stuff clogs up the economy and, it, and makes it operate less, a lot less efficiently. If you, if you eliminate those loopholes, people will make decisions on the basis of how best to get an economic return. And that's what Kemp always favored. How, compassionate conservatism, uh, you know, uh, uh, civil rights, et cetera. How would he have dealt with the most radical leftist president in our history, though? Um, oh, he would have opposed him. I mean, he would have, he, he would have opposed. Uh, now, in the end, he became a softy on foreign policy. He did not like W's war in Iraq at all. Um, but I think even he would have to say that, uh, that, that Obama's been weak on foreign policy. 
he would have been a, he would have been in favor of a of a of a some sort of a health care plan that was much more market oriented mm -hmm. than Obama's. Um, in the case of the stimulus package, he I, I, you know I'm not exactly sure. I think he would have been in favor of infrastructure building because the country needs it. Um, and he certainly would have been fa in favor of enterprise zones. But, but in general, he would have been against Obama. We're talking to uh, Mort Kondracki, a co-author of Jack Kemp, the bleeding heart conservative who changed America. And as I said, we're going to come back and we're going to talk to uh, Mort about uh, uh, John Boehner, Donald Trump, the presidential race. Don't go away. We're coming right back.